Welcome to Sidza.com. Discovery of Proton. The credit to discover the proton goes to Goldstein. As we know that atom is electrically neutral and with the presence of a negatively charged particle in an atom, it was thought that in an atom there must be some positively charged particles also. We know before the you know the proton was discovered, J.J. Thomson from his discharge tube experiment, experiments proved that atom contains negatively charged particles called as electrons. So since we know that an atom as a whole is electrically neutral and the presence of the negatively charged particles in it was established by the J.J. Thomson and that was about 1879. Therefore, it was thought that an atom must be positive, you know, atom must contain some positively charged particles also. That's why the atom, you know, is neutral. So for this purpose, Goldstein in 1886 performed the discharge tube experiments in which he actually took a perforated cathode. The discharge tube experiment that was done by the J.J. Thompson, there we had an anode with the perforations. Now, the modified discharge tube experiment that was, you know, done by the Goldstein, here we find that it is the cathode that is having some perforations, some holes in it. So what he found, he found that when you apply a very high voltage in a discharge tube experiment, you know, in, in a discharge tube, which is actually having a gas at a very very low pressure. So on passing the high voltage between the electrodes, it was found that some rays are actually coming from the anode side and they travel towards the anode, you know, the cathode in straight lines. And once they reach there, you know, at the perforations, they pass through those holes in the cathode and they produce, you know, fluorescence on the glass wall here which is actually coated with some of the you know, fluorescent materials. So what he found that the rays radiations which are actually traveling away from the anode and towards the cathode they can pass through the holes you know in the perforations uh, perforated areas in the cathode and they travel in the straight lines and they hit this glass you know uh, glass wall here and there is some fluorescence observed. Now to know the you know, nature of these rays which actually move away from the anode towards the cathode, Goldstein applied an electric you know, potential difference. A potential difference was applied over here and what he found, he found that once you apply this you know, a potential difference here, the rays which are actually coming from the anode, they travel towards the cathode, they actually get deviated from their original path. You know, this was the original path, the straight line. So this confirmed that the rays which are, which actually move towards the cathode, these are not neutral, rather they consist of the positively charged particles. That's why there is some deviation and you see the spot, you know, the, you see the fluorescence is produced over here. The deviation from the straight line confirms that the you know these rays are not neutral rather these are positively charged because they get attracted by the negative electrode these rays are actually called as anode rays so you need to be a little careful you know these are not the radiations actually that actually you know start from the that are coming from the anode it's not emitted by the anode right we will see the origin of these anode rays is later on in the same video but right now we will discuss some more properties of these you know this anode rays experiments that was done by the Goldstein. So what he found he found that these anode rays actually they travel in the straight lines when there is no applied you know uh, potential difference so the rays are actually they move in the straight lines without any deviation but once you apply the electric field here they get deviated towards the negative electrode 
they get attracted by the negative electrode so which confirms that the anode rays actually are positively charged right they consist of the positively charged material particles that's why there is some deviation the charge to the mass ratio the e by m ratio of these you know particles the anode rays particles that is found to depend on the nature of the gas so that means if you change the gas here the e by m ratio will also change the e by m ratio for the hydrogen for you know nitrogen gas for oxygen gas for the helium it will be different correct so here in the anode rays we find that the e by m ratio actually depends on the nature of the gas and we have learned in the jj thompson experiment you know when we discussed about the cathode rays is there the nature of you know the gas does not change the e by m ratio e by m ratio in the cathode rays actually you know that was same but here it is different experiments reveal that when hydrogen gas is taken inside the discharge tube the particles present in the anode rays have the minimum mass that means these are the lightest positively charged particles correct the lightest positively charged particle is observed when we take the hydrogen gas inside the discharge tube and this positively charged particle that you get from the hydrogen gas was called as the proton now let's look at the origin of the cathode rays and the anode rays how we get these cathode rays and the anode rays you know when you take a discharge tube we know the discharge tube here when we take the discharge tube and we take a gas at a very very low pressure we find that once you connect to the two electrodes here with the external you know battery source a high voltage battery source here initially the electrons are actually ejected from the cathode from this cathode these electrons are ejected and these electrons when they travel towards the anode over here when these electrons they travel towards the anode they hit the gas molecules and that creates the ion that you know that causes the ionization it knocks out the electron the valence electron from the you know the gaseous atom the electrons coming from the the electrons coming from the cathode they hit the gas molecules inside the discharge tube and that creates the ionization of the gas and these negatively charged electrons they travel towards the anode the positively charged particle travels towards the cathode and the, when these negatively charged particles they travel towards the anode this is what you get as a you know a cathode ray right this is the cathode rays and when positively charged particle travels towards the anode and that is that forms the anode rays so these form the anode rays so that means when you apply a very high voltage electrons are emitted by the cathode initially and those electrons they cause the ionization of the gas and then what happens these positively charged particles they travel towards the cathode the negatively charged particles which are electrons they travel towards the anode and here you get the anode you know the cathode rays and here you get the anode rays and when you apply this potential difference you know in absence of the potential difference these positively charged particles actually they tra travel in straight lines there is no deviation in their path but once you apply a potential difference and then this positively charged particle it will be attracted by the negatively charged electrode here so that means the anode rays actually consist of the positively charged particles and the e by m ratio e by m ratio here is maximum when you take the hydrogen gas the lightest particle you get when you take the hydrogen gas here in the discharge tube hope you got the concept thanks for watching the video bye for now